This series of videos looks at how you prepare for an event. Preparation for a live music event is extremely important. The administrative duties and the things that happen behind the scenes are generally the most important for an event. Don't be complacent and don't just think everything's going to work itself out. Make sure you do your research and put your documents and information together. It's always good to have a checklist of exactly everything that needs to be done to execute the event. When choosing an artist for your event, some of the things you might want to think about are audience development. So really knowing what demographics your audience are and the interests that they have as well in terms of music styles and the age range that you're pitching to. So we look at events and, and concerts and live performances from two different angles. One is we look at who the market is first and then go and decide upon who the act will be to perform for that market. The other is we choose the artist and then have to market that to the correct audience. You need to start looking at which artists are relevant currently in the market that appeal to that audience. There's no point looking for someone that was around 15 years ago because that's not really going to help you. You want the hot artists and the people who are doing well now. You don't necessarily need to have the biggest international artist or the biggest name at your event. It's all about finding the right artists who appeal to the right audience. These days, there's a lot of kids in various suburbs around the country who are playing music in their bedrooms and going out and doing small live performances. Sometimes these are the exact people that you need at your gig. There are several ways to find artists for an event. So you can start by looking online, searching for some of your favourite bands and then working out how to get in touch with them. Usually the best place to go is their booking agency. So you would send them an email, give them a call and then the agent would work out what time frame they're available and what their fee is and then you can obviously work out whether you can afford that band. Uh, when you're out watching live music yourself, if there's a band that you come across that you like, you can always go up to them after the show and find out how to get in touch with them or you know what other shows they might be playing. Uh, and this all comes back to knowing your target audience and what kind of direction you want your event to go to. Depending on the size of the artist that you're going to, if they're a national level artist, they'll have a booking agent. However, if they're in the early stages of their career, you might be dealing with a band manager or perhaps even a band member to book the band. Some of the things you'll negotiate in a contract will be obviously the date of the show, the venue, the set time that the band's playing, uh, the agreed performance fee and any other particulars that you might uh, want to list in a contract. When choosing your artist, don't just think about the artist fee. You need to make consideration for all the other things that come along with that artist. What flights are required? What accommodations required? How do they get transported to the venue? What drinks and backstage hospitality do they need? These are considerations that you need to think of from the outset and you need to make sure you budget for them accordingly. Once you've been through your final stages of negotiation with the booking agent or the manager or the artist representative, it's then time to formalize the process. From this point forward, you're going to need to sign some proper paperwork and some legal contracts. Make sure you receive multiple draft copies of the paperwork and you're happy with everything that's in it. If you've got issues with it, make sure that those are reflected in the final contract you end up signing. The role of an MC on the day is to make sure the crowd's pumped up, they're aware of what's going on, um, and just to keep a general vibe going. Depending on the size of your event, you may or may not need an MC. So uh, if you do and you don't have a budget to be able to do that, uh, you could perhaps get one of your mates to do it or your sound engineer could double up as an MC. And it'd be really important to get some briefing notes for them as well to ensure they're giving the right messages. 